We got Gwen Cherry over here. If you care about the black people who helped shape South Florida, the Rolls, the Bullards, the who's who in the black community, then you might care about where they're buried. Oh yeah, D.A. Dorsey, first African-American millionaire in the South. You might want to see their grave sites, but it's not easy. That's a shame for God. Something really need to be done around here about that grave. From the air, you can see that Lincoln Memorial Park covers 20 acres in Miami. It was once a stunning sight. 1,000 concrete tombs stacked side by side, inches apart. Now it's a sad sight, covered with weeds, vines, shrubs, making it almost impossible to find anyone's grave. I was hurt, very hurt. Why? Because I couldn't get in. Melvin Henderson called me after he tried to visit his wife's grave and discovered what neighbors have complained about. Not only is Lincoln Memorial usually locked, it's an eyesore. There's a lot of rodents coming out of there, rats, and roaches, snakes. Beginning in 1924, the cemetery was one of the few places where blacks could be buried. This property, this hallowed ground, this historic landmark. Historic landmark, yes. Forgotten and run down, absolutely. If they're not interested in the pioneer, if they're not interested in their race. I tracked down the owner of the cemetery, Ellen Johnson, who inherited it from her godfather in the 1950s. With a thousand tombs, the cemetery is full, but the state of Florida considers it abandoned. And with no trust fund, no money coming in, Ellen is too old and too broke to maintain it. It's a heartache, financial burden, when you don't have the money and you don't have the help and things like that. It's a drain. Uh -huh. But her niece, Jessica Williams, offered to unlock the gates so Melvin could try to find his wife, Willa May. I don't think I'd be able to walk over these graves there. Also there that day was B.J. Shazar, a former Army veteran who heard about the abandoned cemetery and was heartbroken. Good people. There's no reason to forget them. Ellen Johnson had kept a log of every person buried here since 1924. Willa May's name, buried in 1969, was there. Melvin showed us the general area. That would look like it right there. But look. Hundreds of tombs just above the ground are under a couple of feet of thick vines and weeds. I can dig down, pull it back, but even after you find the tomb, the vegetation has destroyed the name plates and the letters of the names. We looked for Willa Mae's grave site. We couldn't find it. I'll tell you, this is terrible. Before we left, BJ promised Melvin he would try to get some help to clear this 20-acre site to find Willa Mae. Something we learn in the Army is that you never stop serving. Three months later, BJ and Jessica called me and told me, come back and bring Mr. Henderson. There she is. There's your beloved wife. Yep. Thank God. Melvin had not been here in years. Covered by weeds and vines, part of Willa May's name was gone. But a group of Miami-Dade school bus drivers had heard about the rundown cemetery and came out to help. Something just told me to stop and look. And I just bent down, looked, pulled over some brush, and her name was just sticking right out at me. After six months of work, the small group of volunteers has cleared a portion of the cemetery. But to finish the job and restore it, they need a lot more help. So they contacted prominent black politicians and community leaders. The response? Limited to none, Mr. Frazier. And now it's getting urgent. Part of the cemetery may be auctioned off since $1,900 in property taxes have not been paid. BJ and Jessica have started a foundation to finish clearing Lincoln Memorial, to reopen it, because to quote a prominent black man, they have a dream. The community itself can benefit from it, as well as just people of all races just come in and just go on a tour and just learn about the people that are buried here. This is the history of the black community of South Florida. Notice you don't see many tombstones on the graves. There's a historical reason. It's called hatred. There was no headstones originally because the very powerful Ku Klux Klan of Dade County did not believe that African Americans deserved Christian burials. George Butler's family bravely told the Ku Klux Klan in 1924 to shove it and put up a headstone. February is Black History Month. This is black history. February will end, but Lincoln Memorial should not be a dying cemetery. Patrick Frazier, 7 News.